Brighter Light, Darker Shadow by Backing into Infinity Read by Oak Shadow 5 This episode contains chapter 28 and 29, so let's get right into chapter 28, A New Provision, Part 2. Summary The Provisional License Exam concludes. Class 1A gets an exciting visitor. Izuku meets Hubris. The second phase of the Provisional Exam passes in a blur. Izuku mostly focusing on coordinating the rescue efforts of hero trainees with better suited quirks to the wreckage. Afterwards, they return to the waiting rooms to wait for their results, and Kachin regales him with his defeat of Gang Orca. Apparently, he and the whirlwind kid from the start of the exam had teamed up with Todoroki to produce a greatly enhanced Howitzer impact. Wrapping an explosion in a fire tornado sounded pretty awesome to Izuku. He was glad that his friend had enjoyed himself and worked well with others. A buzzer sounded and the students fired their way into the field. A massive billboard displayed everyone's scores, and Izuku spotted his halfway up the pack. Apparently, he had lost points for only making a few rescues with his own hands, but the examiners ultimately understood the importance of coordination in team-up attempts. Look, nerd, I fucking nerd this shit, Kachan says, swapping results with him. Kachan, the sassy barely passed because he cussed out the civilians for not walking back themselves? That isn't nailing it. But it says I had good teamwork. That's progress, bitch. Izuku lost, swapping insults with his best friend as they fill out their licensing forms and receive the durable cards. He looks down at his license, admiring the quirk field. It said not applicable. This was it. Tangible, physical proof that you didn't need a quirk to be a hero. You just needed to have realistic expectations. He pockets the card, making his way back to the bus with his jubilant classmates. All right, class. Today, we will be having some guest speakers to talk to you about the work-study experience. Ezra senses says tightly. Please welcome the big three. Izuku claps alongside his class as UA's top students fall in, two of them happily waving back. The purple-haired student hides behind his friends, and Izuku nudges Hitoshi to note the similarity. The other teen knocks his arm away and rubs his eyes, before slumping back onto his desk to continue napping. All right, the future is looking! The blonde student, Mirio Togata by his name tag, cups his hand and calls out. Grim. Naplos. Violent. Sparkly. Loud. Class 1A shouts back a variety of answers, recognizing a common response prompt, but not knowing what Mirio wanted from them. Oh man, that was a total failure. Mirio says cheerfully, ignoring Nejo's continued assault on Pao Uraka. Apparently her quirk was fascinating, not that Izuku disagreed. Aizawa, why don't I just have them all fight me? That way they can see the difference the experience truly makes. Do whatever. I don't care. Azaba says. All right, everyone meet me in Jim Gamma. Izuku carefully considers his class's opponent as they all gather together in Jim Gamma. For the student who suggests this, he was either arrogant or incredibly skilled. And it wasn't like Azaba to entertain the delusions of someone arrogant. Incredibly skilled, then. Likely with a quirk that would let him divide and conquer their class. A mass destruction in Mitsutai was possible, but it seemed unlikely he would be so confident. Their class had a lot of durable students, and some heavy-hitting emitters of their own. It was more likely that an emitter quirk of that type would be countered by the sheer number of similar caliber quirks. Alright, everyone split up some space out appropriately, Izuku calls, watching his class respond to him by forming a messy grid, a few feet of space between each of them. I suspect he has some type of move on quirk, and plans to take us out individually, Be prepared to assist whoever's beside you and keep the pressure on him until he breaks. That was a quick assessment, Green Bean. Miri calls from the other side of the gym as he enters. I can see why Sonata has his eye on you. Izuku reels for a moment from this information, shocked that his idol would even know who he is. Night Eye was almost former sidekick after all, the same sort of shadow to him that Izuku desired to be for Kachan. Distracted this way, he almost missed the opening salvo. Keyword, almost. Mirio seemed to fade from color out of the corner of his eye, his entire palette getting a little less vibrant. This caught Izuku's attention and snapped him out of the shock, just in time to see the older student fall through the floor. If he doesn't work, he is going to use it to pop up in front of you and dodge. Use lingering attacks and don't try to block, Izuku calls out, his mind scrambling as he tries to figure out the mechanism used in the quirk. Phasing quirks were uncommon, but not incredibly rare. What was rare was a full-body phasing quirk like this that could be used for combat. Becoming incorporeal usually carried some extreme side effects, like loss of stimulus and risking death from meta clipping into your body. Miri shoots out of the ground in front of Jiro, proving that whatever side effects he had couldn't be that bad. He throws a punch at her, but the slim teen was already jumping back. 
On her left was Kaminari, and he reacts quickly enough to jump nearly into Miro and set a current running along his body and in the air around him. The senior student didn't rematerialize, instead of falling back into the ground and popping out away from the group. Wow, that was very smooth. You sure figured me out quick, Miro says, his hero costume slightly scorched from where some electricity must have connected. It's time to get serious now then. What followed was a fairly humiliating defeat for Class 1A. Despite knowing some of the mechanics of Miro's quirk, they couldn't seem to land significant blows on him or put together more pieces of the puzzle to exploit his weaknesses. Meanwhile, they could only await him for so long, and every member taken out reduced their ability to react to his sudden appearances. Ten minutes was all it took for the entire class to be laying on the ground groaning. Izuku still strongly comprehend the full scope of the senior's quirk. Power! Miro screams, doing a pose of a Kachan's body after he finishes them off. Now you can see the difference experience makes. Experience? No offense, senpai, but your quirk is kind of bullshit. Izuku groans from the ground. What kind of pheasant quirk like that has no downsides? You're basically untouchable. Ah uh ah, -uh, that's where you're wrong, green bean. My quirk has a ton of downsides, Miro says, sitting down in front of the clump of defeated students. I lose all my senses when I face, because everything passes right through me. I also fall into the ground if I'm not careful. Even passing through a wall is a complicated multi-step process. I have to carefully face and unface each part of my body in perfect sequence, or it doesn't work. The quick movement is a result of hours of practice figuring out how to arrange my body so that the matter of the ground shows me out in certain directions. This experience, the ability to use your quirk to the fullest, is the real advantage of a work study. Izuku groans, relaxing against the cool concrete as he realizes his mistake. Of course, that sort of quirk are drawbacks. Every quirk does. He should have looked for how they were being mitigated, not simply looked for a different set of drawbacks. Out comes Razor. Do not multiply quirk drawbacks unnecessarily. Huh? You will all have to find your own work studies using the connections you made at internship and beyond. The school will not help you with this, but you would be remiss to dismiss such valuable experience. Class is dismissed for today. Good luck. As Aba rises from his position in a sleeping bag on the floor to leave the class, two of the big three trailing up behind him. Hey, Greenbean! Miro calls, offering Izuku a hand up. Yes, senpai? Izuku says, pulling himself to his feet with some difficulty his stomach and head throbbing from repeated impacts. You already have an offer for work study? My mentor, Sir Night Eye, has had his eye on you since the sports festival. He doesn't take intern students, but now that you have a provisional license, he would love if you came to work with him. I would love to, Izuku says excitedly, shaking his senior's hand eagerly. Great, swing by the agency next week and we can get the paperwork drawn up. That was chapter 28, now we continue on to chapter 29. A new work study. Summary. Izuku has a meeting. Izuku nervously steps off the train in Osaka, adjusting his backpack on his shoulder as he checks the map on his phone. Sunlight Ed's agency is about an hour from UA, and people were just starting to get off of work as Izuku arrived. He made his way down the crowded sidewalk to the location his maps app indicated, a tall, modern five-story building with imposing security doors. The doors swing open as he approaches, and a friendly-looking secretary at the front waves at him. Hello, you must be Midoriya. Miriam mentioned you would be stopping by soon. Yes, that's me. Alright, well, I have some paperwork for you to sign, waivers and so on. Then you can make your way up to Sonata's office, I'll bust you in. Izuku fills out the forms quickly, glancing over the standard waivers that the All Hero Course activities use. He passes the forms back to the secretary and tucks his pen back into his bag, making his way over to the elevator. It hisses open, revealing a blue skinned woman with a cheerful grin. Hi, you must be Midoriya. She says, chuckling. You look just as scary as me, you claimed. Thank you, Izuku says matter-of-factly. Are you one of the night at sidekicks? Yes, I'm Bubble Girl. My name is Abata Kaoroku. Sir is expecting you. Good luck. Bubble Girl makes her way out of the elevator, waving at the secretary as she leaves the building. Izuku fidgets nervously, pressing the button for the fifth floor and waiting as the elevator takes him upwards. The doors ding and slide open, revealing a short hallway with a few closed doors. At the end of the hallway, one door is slightly cracked, the plate on the door identifying it as Night Eye's office. Izuku pushes it open and pokes his head in. Hello? Sir Night Eye? Mira said to swing by for a work study opportunity? Ah, yes, Midoriya, come in. Sir Night Eye is sitting at his desk inside of a room, absolutely plastered with floor to ceiling armored merchandise, fidgeting with a stamp. His desk is covered in a variety of papers. Izuku makes his way into the room 
looking around in wonder at the variety of merchandise, and takes a seat in front of the desk. I saw your sports festival performance, very impressive, Sanet S says. As you might know, my own quirk is not suitable for frequent use in combat, so I do the majority of my work quirkless. You showcased a very impressive grasp of the skills necessary for quirkless heroics and for investigative heroism. I hear from Mirio that you've begun training analysis as well. Yes, sir. I've been trying to work on predictive combat recently, and Principal Nazel has been giving me some other lessons. Interesting. So, how does Bubble Girl's quirk work? Sinat so unless his fingers together, leaning forwards with a serious look on his face. Impress me, and I'll send these work study papers I have here. Bubble Girl? Oh, did you have her pass by me specifically for this test? Izuku fidgets on a seat for a moment before beginning. Well, obviously she has blue skin, but that seems more like a secondary mutation, so I imagine her quirk has something to do with the gas mask she wears for a hero costume. Bubble Girl implies at least some sort of bubble, so maybe bubbles of gas? Except that seems too vague, so probably a specific type of gas, right? The rest of her suit looked like it could be useful in closer combat, especially those heavy combat boots, so she probably cannot control the bubbles, just generate them. Very impressive. Yes, Bubble Girl's quirk is to produce bubbles of a gas that mimics the smell of anything she has smelled before. I see that Miriam was not lying about your abilities. You can definitely be a help to this agency. Night Eyes says, signing the forms in front of him and tucking them into a folder. Your class ran into the League of Villains earlier this year, correct? Yes, sir. Izuku says nervously, thinking back to the stressful year's day attack and bemoaning the loss of his knife yet again. Nothing ever cut quite like a first knife. You are already familiar with some aspects of this case, then. My agency has been tracking a Yakuza group known as the Shihasakai for months now, suspecting them to be behind much of the trigger production in the area. Two months ago, we gained evidence that they might be testing a new type of drug, rumored to be able to erase quirks. Night A pauses, letting the information sink in. Before we could confirm the existence of such a drug, the Shihasakai were wiped out as an organization when a raid on the main compound killed the Liga and half their personnel. A witness, captured by police responders afterwards, described the attackers in a way that lights up the leaders of the League, Shigaraki Tomura and Kuragiri. Since then, my agency has been hard at work attempting to track down their home base, so that heroes can launch a raid to wipe them out once and for all. And I can help with that, right? Izuku says eagerly. Investigation like this is exactly the sort of heroism I want to do, and Shigaraki stole my knife! What? He stole my knife? Well, technically I stabbed him and just didn't get a bag. Night Eyes sighs, massaging his fight briefly. Well, be that as it may, you are correct. You'll be working closely with myself and Razorhead, your homeroom teacher, to gather certain information on the group's composition and location. Hopefully, you and any of the students will not have to engage in any combat. Not even a little? Maybe in minor roles in the final raid, but I would prefer to keep you mostly out of harm's way. Aww. So Night Eyes stands, passing a few forms over to Izuku. Give these to your homeroom teacher. He get in contact with me about your school schedule, and we can coordinate any work you be doing. I'll get back to you next week with the first assignment. Isa cuts out of the office, waving happily at the secretary as he heads home, excitement welling in his head as he thinks about the chance to finally do real hero work. This was chapter 28 and 29 of Breath of Light Like a Shadow. Izuku got a placement with Sonat A Force work study like in canon. But anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed these two chapters and I'll see you all next time. Bye!